Hey everyone, today I'm actually going to be covering a theory that does not have to do with Steven Universe. Surprise! And it's on Star vs. the Forces of Evil, a very good show that is definitely getting better, so I do recommend watching it. Now, on to the theory. Marco is just a human, but what if he's more? What if he has a destiny and maybe f is fated to do certain things? The show has hidden some clues that may lead to a conclusion about Marco's future. A good starting off point would be to look at Toffee's reaction to meeting Marco in the season 1 finale. Marco is called a disappointment, which does not make sense because he is just supposed to be a teenaged boy. Why would Toffee expect anything from him? Well, perhaps it is because Star and Marco are part of a prophecy where their souls are bound for all eternity and are destined to face each other in battle. So if you did not think this show had a serious side to it, think again. Basically Star and Marco are on opposite sides. Of course, at this point, it seems like they'll always be good friends and could never spill apart, but from the very beginning, there are hints that they are polar opposites. Starting with their names, they represent certain things. Star is obviously a star, and her mother's name is Moon, so it is pretty obvious that they have some sort of night theme going on. And Marco is the sun. His last name is Diaz, which is similar to Dia, the word for day in Spanish. And you know what you see during the day? The sun. Also, his original name was Sol, which also means sun. This is backed up by the image of the Prophecy Room from St. Olga's. Look where each of them are standing. On the right is Star, who is standing next to a star, and on the left is Marco in a dress, next to the sun symbol. But that's only the very start of it. From their gender, to their color scheme, to the way they act, they are extremely different. Almost like it is done purposely to create a parallel of some sort. So the show creates the theme of them being on different sides, even if it is mostly subtext at this point. Now if in fact they are supposed to be on opposite sides, what are they? Well, for Star that is easy. She is Munian, so she is on their side. Now of course this would make Marco on the human side, but they are not really part of this battle, meaning the only other possible side would be the monsters. So Marco is meant to be on the monster side, which is definitely hard to believe. But in actuality, he is already part monster, and is constantly reminded of this fact. In episode 3a, Marco's arm was turned into a tentacle. It ended up forcing Marco to hurt others, although in the end Marco was able to get control of it and eventually got rid of it. The arm also called Marco pathetic. The tentacle, before turning back into a normal arm, told Marco that he could never fully get rid of it for good. The tentacle compares itself to a virus that will never totally be cured. And it is mostly true that the tentacle is still inside of Marco because in the episode Storm the Castle, he has a sudden flashback of it. So somehow Marco is going to go on the side of the monsters, willingly or not. If he does it willingly, perhaps it's because that he sees that they do have some good in them, which was made clear in Independence Day when it was learned that years ago Munians got rid of the native monsters by force. Now there is a third part to the image that I have yet to mention, the moon on the side of it. It is possible that this is representing the blood moon, which is supposed to be able to intertwine the two souls forever. And in the episode the blood moon ball, that is exactly what happened. So they are in some ways meant to be together and some ways apart? Yeah, this is pretty confusing, but it is seen that they are cleaved together and apart at the same time. Yes, I just used the word cleaved, which is actually said by Glossaric in the season finale. It can mean to separate something or to stick something together, and both definitions can be used to describe Star's and Marco's interactions with each other. For sticking together, there have been moments that work with this definition. At the beginning of the show, Marco and Star were stuck together because of events they could not control. Now they are always together, fighting monsters and such, and during the Blood Moon Ball, they dance with each other underneath the light of the Blood Moon that is supposed to bring them together, perhaps forever. And for being separated, the big moment we have is when Star destroys her wand in order to save Marco. Also, whenever they fight, that could be a form of cleaving, as the relations between the two get worse. Will it ever be enough to make them go their separate ways? Possibly, but I sure hope not. So these characters go through a lot of cleaving, and this draws a clear line between the two. But there is no one side of cleaving that is clearly more visible than the other at this point, which means that it could go either way. And if a battle must happen that will tear them apart, then hopefully in the end they will get back together. So if they are on opposite sides, that means that Marco is just as important to the monsters as Star is to the people of Muni. Which gets me back to why Toffee called Marco pathetic. As the one that will fight on the side of the monsters, he expected so much more from Marco. But what he got was nothing like he expected. Or at the very least, he seemed so much less than Star, who could be quite the warrior at points. Of course, Toffee still keeps Marco alive because he needs him, 
and in fact Toffee most likely wants to ensure that the prophecy happens. So everything that Toffee has done has been for a purpose, including his motives to destroy the wand. Technically it was not completely destroyed, and was split in half. One half Star has, which has become a wand again, although a very different looking one. The other half is missing, and perhaps it has the potential to become a wand of its own. What if Toffee does end up using that piece of the wand to make another, and the only one who could properly wield this wand was Marco? The sun shown here could be the symbol of the wand if he ever does use it. With each side having their own wand, they could then properly battle each other. Although this is just one potential outcome. Perhaps they will ignore the prophecy and choose their own path. Or if this battle does happen, in the end Star and Marco will find a way to be friends again. So that was my first Star vs the Forces of Evil theory. And it was quite a long one. If you had no idea what I was talking about at all during this series, then I suggest you watch the first season of the show. It's still currently in hiatus, so there is plenty of time to catch up. But if you want to just watch the more lore or important to this theory episodes, I have made a list in the description of which ones you should watch. I may be doing a couple more theories for this show, as it does have a lot of potential for great lore despite what the first few episodes may have you think. So thanks for watching, 